All right, everybody. Welcome back from a long off season this year. We're bringing you Satel 2023 all new Survivor Series. Today, I have two special guests with me. As you know, Bear, say hello to the kind folks. Good, good morning, good evening, and uh, everything, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me know if you guys can hear everything okay. This is the first stream of the year onto YouTube. Let us know how it sounds, how the audio is, if, it's, if I'm deafening you. And this morning, we also have a very familiar voice. It's getting crowded in here. Hey, Cody, who, who's this it's, third person? Who, who could this be? It's a little, a little crowded in this Discord channel. It's, uh, we have somebody else in the room. Do you care to introduce yourself? <laughs> I really like to introduce myself. It's more of a... <laughs> kind of go with the flow kind of thing <gasps> well, he's back folks the man with a plan i the don't face well the, the issue there is that i never have a plan so it's always that's kind of what what ended up happening i disappeared because there was no plan things just kind of came out of nowhere and built from there i guess if i had a plan it would have probably gone differently well i mean probably. you you started something and and that became incredibly successful and 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 it took over your, no, 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 your no, no, free time no, no. there was no i started something this was very much a team effort right so this all started i i cannot take credit for where Satel went and where it is now this is very much a thing that started way back before i even took it over right so um 64 51st then 64th we did some stuff and then it it came into where it is now and continually growing but really where we are today i could safely say without bear and coyote i mean this wouldn't wouldn't be happening right now i mean i stepped away and say tell somehow was able to continue going and that wouldn't have happened without you guys so i yeah, let's i do start. not take credit for this let's uh multar see how, how, how does this sound now to you guys I'm, I'm cranking discord up super high can you guys hear him okay now was I too quiet? I think so was I. Um, let's not forget Alpha Whiskey has also been part of the oh, team, obviously sure. from the. And, Alpha uh, Whiskey, I mean, with his trailers and stuff, it's been he is a big part of the marketing push and the notoriety that Saytel has garnered due to him getting eyeballs on on the streams themselves. Without that stuff, it wouldn't have wouldn't have happened. You know, during your your short hiatus, I, I don't know what happened. I, I hit my head on on a tree or something. Um, but but we've pretty pretty close to doubled in size in terms of we've got double the amount of four v four teams than we had last year. And last year was a big year. Last well, that's season. Pro that's probably because people actually don't like me. That's probably really uh, why. Well, we'll see if they start dropping off with the kick here. Way <laughs> another hiatus for you. Yeah, well, that's, it's fine. I go, I go where the I'm wanted, and if I'm not wanted here, that's fine. So now but I'm excited about that. Loud. So can you guys take me through what has changed, what has transitioned, what is? A lot of things have changed in from last year to this year. I mean, it's the Survivor Series. This is four v four. There's some sixty teams competing. We're moving from a three, a best out of three setup to a best out of two setup. So. Kind of give us the, while these guys are ingressing, what is the the synopsis, if you will, or a snapshot of what is going to transpire? Uh, yeah, I'll answer that. Um, well, like you said correctly, the Survivor Series is, is very different in the sense of we we dropped the 3v3, three, three three, or best of three format for a, for a two halves, a sum of two halves, the first half and the second half. Uh, that is to make shorter matches, make sure we don't sit with three, three and a half hour long matches, which are fuel games, and then just end up in the last 30 seconds done. Uh, it gives scheduling easier for the players, uh, more entertaining for the viewers, more matches. Uh, it's so exciting. The, the objective is to control the zone, and there is a shrinking bubble, as we introduced last season. The owners of the zone who knock out the other ones must return to base, land on the runway, come to a stop, and they get points for every survivor that went to contact, w went into combat. Okay. What about weapon restrictions? 
So weapon restrictions for three of the four stages are a similar to a B weapon reset that we had in, in 2019. The 120 Charlie, the 54 Charlie, the SD-10 are banned. Teams are not allowed to take more than eight air-to-air -air missiles and no more than six Fox 3s. The AIM-9X is also banned. No air-to-ground, no decoys, no tiles. Okay. What about mission locations? Are we utilizing all of the different locations, or is it just caucuses again? It's, it's, it is just caucuses again. We found that in, in last season, where we had three option, three map options, 3% uh, of all the matches took place outside of caucuses. That's not worth it to maintain the missions. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, we're not, we, we did away with the veto process. This year, it's divided into four stages. Each stage is different with a different theme. And each stage has one map that the viewers do not know what it is at the moment. Malta, can I interrupt you for a little bit? I want Coyote to just say what's happening here. This is a scrim between and Coyote, take it away. No problem. So today, this is a, a scrim we took for an example today. Uh, this happened not too long ago in the last patch. Uh, please let me know how my volume is. I've got six different mixes going on here today, trying to get things squared away for YouTube. But today we have OTP facing off against Mumblerines, uh, 4v4, and we are on a Napa uh make up for the scrim map and the maps will change for these scrims as these stages go forward but um you may be noticing a couple things missing here guys this is just a familiarization stream um normally in the past you would have seen the bubble in the zone on the f10 map that is coming for our streams however this is just a scrim so you do not have that available right now but as we watch these two teams ingress and prepare for the fight um we're going to kind of answer some of your questions as we're live Please, guys, utilize chat. We're going to clarify some things we've been noticing over the last couple of weeks that people have been talking about um, and kind of just go over in general what the rules are, what some gotchas and some catches are, not the schedules out, and just get you guys more familiar and ready to rock for this year's long season ahead. I do want to put in a little disclaimer. Uh, Mumbarines and OTP were actually instructed by me to... Uh, just mess around, shoot each other, and I want three or four people to, to land at the end of it. So they didn't take this one very seriously by instruction from me. Uh, one, quick, one quick thing to note for all the people that have helped us test and helped us with, with just assisting us in, in things that we may ask of them to do to make this server and all the insane automation that bear has built from scratch this season with the help of, of, uh, of our fellow competitor, Kikaku, um, to make this season better. And absolutely from scratch, you guys, this season was from a zero blank page to what it is right now. And I'm looking forward to seeing what this year holds. So Bear, if you want to uh, go over anything, I'm, I'm watching chat if anything happens and comes up here, guys. But um, if you guys have any questions, please let, let them up in chat. And uh, Bear, I'll hand it off to you if you have anything you wanted to go over off the uh, off the bat. Well, um, unfortunately, we can't see it on the on on the stream right now, but you will see it when we start streaming the live matches. the The shrinking bubble, the shrinking bubble shrinks at at a decent place, and through many hours of testing, we we came up with a with a pace which applies pressure, but not over not massive stress on the teams. Uh, it, it, it speeds up the game format to an extent, uh, but it's it's to provide pressure, not to not not to make teams too uncomfortable. It's dangerous if the zone closes in on you, you die. Uh, owning the zone, you would get a message in game that you need to RTB to either base. You either your home base or what was the enemy's base now becomes your base. That is the objective is to get as many people from combat back landed on the runway i'll stress that and we'll show an example of that a little later and come to a stop that'll give points you could because it's 4v4 you could get a maximum of four points per half uh but if you got three survivors three points two survivors two points one survivor one zero zero 
the half is a draw, and we can see. There's a kill, Kaidi. You missed it. It's actually it. our second kill already. We missed one in the beginning, but it's all good. No worries. All right, perfect. So the the teams are now restricted to the zone. They cannot fly out of the zone. Flying out of the zone before they get to the edge, they will get a warning. They must turn around immediately, head back to Bulls. It's steer point number three in every single aircraft available. The... Uh, it, you cannot leave the zone. You will explode if you leave the, leave the zone. Until it is owned, it is owned when there are no more enemy aircraft in the zone or airborne that can come into the zone. Real close shot here coming in from uh, onto Maus. <laughs> Maus. Maus. From, uh, I believe that was Enjoy, tenth of a mile away. But continue. Sorry about that, I forgot, I, ne negative, I, I forgot I had pushed to talk, and I'm so sorry. Uh, what I do also want to point out is OTP have supplied liveries. We do have their new liveries. We believe that they flew this scrim uh, with their old liveries, so the names probably changed, and that's why they don't see it. But the Mumbleween's liveries, if you could get a view of those, they look absolutely fantastic too, don't they? Good merge here from uh, Kiel. Kiel. Kewl and Beef, possibly? This is turning into a furball here. Uh, Mao is about to merge with Beef. 120 from Beef onto Mao's. Mao is onto Gaz. I think this 120 is going to take a hit right here onto Mao's. Dead. I believe that's an impact. He is down. We're down with three remaining aircraft, as we were hoping for. Again, this was a setup match by, by us, by our request, to illustrate what you guys are supposed to do and how a match is supposed to look and end. So we'll go ahead and follow these guys back as they are TB. Uh, chat, let's see here. Question to the OTP guys, if any here, VTAF, oh no, uh, I don't know if any OTP guys are here today, Archer, but, uh, ask him in Discord if you want. Um, can you give me an F10 view so I can see how many are left? Alright, three pilots from Mumbleweens are survived. Now when we do a stream, you will see 3-0 on the scoreboard, on the overlay, uh, but that does... That is reflecting the score at the end of the half. If, for example, who do we have there? Ryan or Beef or Enjoy happen to crash or run out of fuel, that score could go down to 2-0 or 1-0. Uh, they're RTB on their way home. When, uh, when they're closer to, to the base, we'll, uh, we'll zoom in on them. You got to use the Russian symbols, my man. You know, I've had a lot happen with the <laughs> stream. Okay. If anybody knows last season when I had all these problems going on with my build. Oh, it's inevitable. This, this was the last thing that I, I should I, 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 I forgot to change. Oh, I'll, so I'll pick me. out some more. I'll pick out some more. Sue me. We can come up with some other stuff. It's uh dude, it is an ever never ending list of things that have to be remembered and done in order to make these streams possible and happen. So I just applaud you for making it happen. I just like to nitpick because I've been in your shoes before. I know what it's like. Yes. Yes. I really uh, I really like these liveries. I'm I'm think it's awesome that Teams now are using their own liveries. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah, I think that's fantastic, and that we're be we're able to showcase them. Now, do they use them, and are they able to utilize them in the sim during the match? Can they see them? Yeah, their own teams can use them. Um, we have a private skin depository in Discord. So what you do is you make a, th a thread private, so nobody else can see it, and your teams are allowed to have external skins on your aircraft, so you can look all fancy and pretty all you want uh, when you're fighting. So, as these guys are TB here, a um, couple things to note here, guys, regarding the return to base logic. Okay, so once a round or a half is completed, because this is the best of two halves, 3 0, which means Mumblerines have three aircraft left. If all three pilots to land, and you must land on the runway, okay, this is very important. Bear, I'm not sure if you were talking because you were on push to talk or not, but I'm going to go ahead and step on to here. Um, 
You guys see how a runway is a rectangle. You guys see how this is a box. The rectangle is the landing zone. No landing on taxiways, no landing on the grass, no landing on hangars, no landing on roads and fields. You must land on the runway and come to a complete stop for your survivor point to count. So as we go ahead and ride along with Beef here, as each player touches down, it will solidify the survivor point that you will gain from the person coming back home and surviving as well as the round overall win. And we'll see it here and Beef touches down. So just to, to actually clarify that, or a minor correction, Cody, um, they will be told Beef is landing first. When he touches down on the runway, he will say it will say that beef has landed um when he comes to a full stop it will uh, it will affect the scoreboard for them in the game uh they have to come to a full stop the full stop can be anywhere within the base limits it would be a draw it, it is indicated on the f10 map what the base limit is unfortunately we don't see it in the stream but they do see it in the game and they have access to it for where they can stop in fact if i recall correctly enjoy comes to a stop he lands on the runway which is important um at a stage he turns around before stopping and uh it still would capture that as a survival so can you talk about how the point system works in this because you talk about survival points do they get points for a win or is it all based on the number of aircraft that make it back so yes, a, a half is won by the number of survivors. A match is won by the team that has the most survivors out of two halves. So for example, in this round, hypothetically, Mumbleereens get all three people down and they the score would be 3-0 to Mumbleereens. In the second half, OTP come back and win 4-0. They kill all of Mumbleereens and they return safely land on the runway and come to a stop and get four survivor points the match is won by otp mumbarines our second place uh our log or our standings table will give three points for the win to otp zero points for the loss to mumbarines mumbarines will however take those three survivor points in a separate column which is used to as the second change or the the second option for when the points are matched and otp will take their four points four survivor points mm. okay that makes sense i think uh what can happen during the league stage of our competition is draws could happen Team one could win, could, could have two points at the end of the half, and team two can have two points at the end of the second half. That would be a draw. Both teams get one point each, and those two survivor points are added. Uh, but come the elimination stage there, we're not allowing a draw. If it's a draw at the end of the second half, we're doing 1v1 dogfights, best of three, Pilots that flew in the match get to go face each other in three rounds, a different pilot per round. And here's the kicker. They must use an aircraft and a pilot that flew in that match. I like that. I like so, that a lot. Mono, settle the score. Um, the is there, any, is, is there any penalty for team kills aside from loss of survivor points? Uh, no, no penalty for that. No. Okay. Is there any penalties for breaking the rules? There absolutely is a penalty for breaking the rules. Uh, weapon restrictions. Cody, would you like to, are we going to take a, a, a short break or we're going to run straight into the second example? If you guys want to give us uh, two minutes to set up a new track, we'll give you an example of weapon restrictions and mistakes that can cost your team heavily if you guys are not careful. So we'll be right back in about a few minutes, and I'll see you all shortly. Later.
All right, guys. We are back. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we're going to go over a couple things regarding um, weapon restrictions, what to do if it happens to you, uh, penalties, etc. What to et do if it happens to you. What to do if it happens to you, exactly. So this We're not like a dare truck. We don't have the dare sticker on this stream. It's, it's <laughs> like, this is a safe place. <laughs> so... Uh, not meant to call anybody out at all by any means. This is what scrims are for, for practice and everything. But um, if you guys notice anything different about this season's weapon restrictions that we just mentioned, you might notice some different weapons are on this person's aircraft than the rest. And we're about to find out what happens to him when he takes off. Well, and I want to point out, too, that people are going to make mistakes, guys. When I've flown competitively, and I did it a lot, there were times in matches and in scrims where I actually forgot to take weapons. So it's people mess up. They go through this and they're on autopilot. They're not thinking and they push the wrong button where they are thinking and they misclick. Things happen. So I just want to point that out in a capacity to say, don't think poorly about people or think that they're trying to cheat. Things very easily can happen by mistake. The key here is to make sure that those mistakes don't carry on into the round itself and give a team a perceptual advantage from accidentally taking the wrong weapons. So luckily with scripting, we've managed to, I mean, we detect your loadout on takeoff and we warn you if you've broken the restrictions, we then give you the ability to make a circle, make sure you don't leave your home zone because then you have an intention to use those by mistake accidentally loaded weapons. Um, so you can land and fix your loadout. Now landing and fixing your loadout is the only option that you have you cannot go back to spectators and take a new jet because the the loadout failure is cancelled only if you land again on the runway. The rectangular box indicated on the <laughs> on the F10 map. Very 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 important. A couple of teams have have tried to to do that. Shooting off your weapons will make no difference. You need to land to cancel the fact that you have a bad loadout before you can take off again. Just to make sure we're clear, guys, I'm going to say it one more time. When you take off, you will get a warning. Correct? Amen. And when they can take off, you're going to get a warning saying you have an illegal loadout. You must, you must return to land, correct the loadout, and then proceed. I you want to make sure that is, that is clear. You will also get a, a second warning if you're actually straying too far away from your home base. And, I mean, two warnings, and if you continue on course, eh, bad things will happen. Now, know, guys, that if any of you were here last season and saw last season's streams, there will be the bubble markers, there will be the zone markers around each of the uh, air bases and around bullseye they're not here right now but you will see them in f10 in the match and you will see a little bubble around the zone you will see a little red rectangle or blue rectangle around the runway notating everything for you but just know they will be there in match not a problem but make sure if you take off you must return to land nothing else no back to spectators nothing else on that topic if you have selected an aircraft Let's say you've selected an F-14, for example, and you depart with an illegal loadout. And you find out that, oh, shoot, I, I messed up something or something is messed up. And it happens. But you chose the F-14 when you took off and you wanted when you when you took off and selected your slot. You may not change the aircraft after you've started the round. You can't switch from an F-14 and say, you know what, never mind, I'll take an F-16 instead. You're allowed to change aircraft in between halves, but not in the middle of a round. The first aircraft you pick will be the aircraft locked to you. Oh, so you guys are allowing people to change aircraft mid-round? We are, oh. and that is... That's mid, a big departure. Mid, 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 uh, mid between halves, not in the middle of the round. So once you, yeah, once, once you begin a round or a half, if you will, you're in that aircraft. But when the next half starts, you can change aircraft. Okay, that's and cool. That's new. I think that's a good change. It's new, and we're really excited about it because you 
the way we've set the servers up and everything is available, uh, squadron leaders have access to the setup tutorial video that we made on how to set up servers. Um, it's in the pin channel in our Discord. But the best part about that is that you won't know what the other team has. The other team's uh, slots are password protected that nobody will know except the other team who set the server up. And you can't see the server in the server list. So you have no idea what the oh other team gosh, is coming Oh my gosh, that is with. amazing. That is awesome. This so is no longer can you open the score, the scoreboard and see what the opponent's flying. Correct. You just you have no idea. You have no idea. Oh, until this you get is the amazing. Nails. Yes, and oh. credit to Bear for the amount of insane work that it took because once uh, once DCS and Eagle Dynamics added the password protection, um, there was a lot of problems with being able to password protect our slots that were going to work with our scripts. And Bear, being the wizard that he is. Um, is able to figure it out, and now you have no idea what the other team has. And until you get the nails, you won't know, which I think is amazing. That's so awesome. These or if guys you get smacked by an ET, you'll have no idea that it was even there. Ex if the guy decided oh. to be right or off the whole time, you would have no idea. This is break, awesome. Break, break, break. Cardi, can you pause for a second? I, I actually yeah, want to sure. just so that we don't forget tonight. I don't want to stray too far away from it. Now, there is another big change, and it's fairly controversial, but in, in 4v4, it's four players versus four players. In multi-crew aircraft, with the F-14, for example, with that has the option for a Rio, if a team takes a human Rio, they are down to three jets, because four players versus four players. Can now, you take Jester? You can take Jester. Jester is allowed, and he's more than welcome to, to be annoying in the back seat if you so choose to to be with him. Um, there, there's numerous reasons behind it, but what we, what we felt, uh, just to give you, you you guys a little bit of indication, this has taken me ten months, um, and and Coyote and I have have spent pretty much ten months discussing, debating, arguing fighting hating each other going over what should and should not be allowed um and one of the things that that i am i am very for four players versus four players i am scared that if the f-15e drops we're going to have 16 players in a in a 4v4 s game and that is going to be a lag festival and and that Maybe, maybe future things in Eagle Dynamics and DCS would allow us to, to handle that type of thing uh, without desync and without lag. But uh, up until then, I find that there, in my experience in the past, the most lag and desync comes when there's a ping difference between the Rio human and the pilot. Uh, so. And, and it's going to be disgusting when there's 16 people in a 4v4. Uh, so if a team does decide that they want to take a chance and go three jets versus four in the first half, what I didn't want to do was lock them to that decision because they might decide this was a really, really bad idea and have that option to come back in the second half. I didn't want to lock them into the F-14 because they chose it in the first half as as three jets versus four so we gave them that option to come back with a second and it also okay. allows and again this leads back into not knowing what the other team has you may you may choose your your fleet your flight and realize wow that went terrible they just crushed us we should change our game plan and you have the entire freedom to do so in the next half I'll go ahead. That's and right. Here. Um, right. Notice the problem with uh, that pilot. What is wrong with his weapon restriction? Fins are smaller. His fins are a little cut. So a new question that I have is, what changed as far as mods being allowed? Because I don't think we've discussed that yet. No. Unfortunately. Mods provide a gateway for additional cheating mods to, to, to go through. So for this season, we took everything away. All mods gone. And uh, 
it, I feel it's nice because we start with a base level, extremely low, extremely simplistic, and as more and more um, abilities to detect any form of cheating comes into play, we can we can slowly start loosening the the tight restrictions on those things. So White Lion has taken off now, and he's got the warning, and he's been told land to fix it. You made a mistake. You've got the wrong weapons. You want to land. He's he's got it, it's four miles from from the center of the runway is the the distance that he has to to cover. It is shown on his F10 map and everybody else in the server. So he knows he's made a mistake. He's been warned. He's had the audio cues. He's going to do a quick reland. He must land on the runway. He cannot land on the taxiway. Do not do that. Do not take off and land on the taxiway. It will not clear your loadout restriction. You may take off. You will, if you take off with a bad or a good loadout again, you may not get a warning, but you will explode if you leave the home base because you didn't follow an instruction. Um, yeah, so Malta, regarding the mods, it's it's a, it's a difficult thing, and it, I mean, it's, it's hard being tough in that, but we really want to promote fair play and everybody on the, on a similar environment to... to to go so we start at the at rock bottom and as as we can handle more and more things we start loosening the uh the noose so that's white lion returning to base because of his bad weapon selection affirmative. yep he's returned to base he's now touched down he will come to a complete stop he's gonna go rearm his jet fix the loadout restrictions and he is very heavy he didn't jet those bags so it's gonna be a long 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 rollout and <laughs> Yeah, that, well, you know, is it going to take quicker to to put new bags on or uh, or keep the bags? That's a decision the pilot, I guess, has to make. I'm going to pause this real quick here to show you guys something else, how imperative it is to verify your loadouts. Um, look at the problem we're running into now. Now, of course, this was a scrim, and they may have only had th uh, three people available for this scrim, guys. Please keep that in mind. Um, this is just a, a practice scrim that we did or that this these two teams have done in the past. Uh, keep in mind now... You still got four other jets coming in from the other team, and they don't care that you messed up, and they will capitalize as best they can to capitalize on the lack of a player. So it will hurt, that you. Is, hurt you. That is a good point. The first team into the zone actually starts controlling the zone, and there is a control timer of three minutes for the first team that enters, and in the event that it, it ever gets to a second control, it would be two and a half minutes. If that timer runs out, the team owns the zone. And again, you would see the zone in F10, and you will see it on stream, and you will see it in-game in your F10 as well. You will always be able to see both the takeoff airport, the enemy airport, and the main combat zone as it shrinks live on F10. So, as you can see now, um, 4SV has, has chosen to do something... Um, a little bit different is they're deciding to fly back and and wait for their uh for their teammate now take what bear just said and think about the zone controlling because now 404 is in the zone 4sv is not in the zone a timer is now starting they contest the zone if they hold it for three minutes and 4SV has not re-entered the zone to contest the zone, that's it. That's that's right. Now, just for the viewers out there, the pilots have a scoreboard in the top right-hand corner of, of their screen, and it is showing that the, 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 uh, the zone is being controlled and there is a clock, and it counts down in seconds, or counts up in seconds, Counts down in seconds uh, to zero. So they are aware of how much time they have left to get into the zone. Um, if I recall with this one, <laughs> the team literally made it in the last second. They managed to take it from controlled by blue to contested by red and blue. We highlighted this in our Discord if you guys are interested. Uh, we made, we posted a little short video on this, but uh, 4SV was actually able to avoid losing the round or the half by literally less than half a second is when they made it back in. 
on the top right of their screen where my mouse is, if you can see it or not, you guys know where DCS displays text messages on the screen. That is where you will be seeing the live information on the round and everything you need to know is all up in the top right of your screen. So now Forest V has regained uh, their flight and they're continuing their ingress back into the combat zone from Bullseye. As you can see here, they still have a little ways to go. And I don't have the live timers, I apologize, but I will show you as best I can how close this came to being around loss. So now just out of interest, the zone only shrinks when it's contested. The states of the zones are neutral. There's nobody in it. Controlled, there's one team in it. Contested, there's one from each team in it. Owned, there's one from a team at least in it. And uh, nobody else that can go in it. And uh, that's owned. So there we go. Forest V is now in is now in the in the zone. They made it with just a half a second to spare, and they will continue their fight. And if you'll notice now, however, 404 is extremely close to Bullseye, and Forest V has all 40 miles to go. So the zone advantage here will go to 404, and with the zone shrinking behind Forest V, they will have a hard time keeping up and being pressured with their backs against the wall to come out of this on top. So, a trailing player may get a warning because the zone is shrinking when it's contested. Uh, if the trailing player gets a warning message, which does happen from time to time because the zone shrinks behind him while he's entering the zone, provided he has a provided he's flying into the zone and not flying out of the zone, he is immune from dying for that for that shrink but with it is only in that circumstance that that he is immune from dying to a shrinking zone it's from when you first enter the zone and it shrinks on you because it was already counting down uh pilots are safe from that however if you're turning outwards in a direction that would lead you out of the zone uh you would be in trouble now, just know, guys, that probably sounded very confusing, but that is a very ex that is an extreme edge case. Um, I don't believe we ever saw a situation like that occur yet. Um, but it's been it's extremely seldom. So just keep that in mind. But anything else you guys want to mention? Um, Bear, I can't think of much else right now. Um, chat, do you guys have any questions for us? Uh, as always, you know, please keep up in our Discord. Let us know, you know, what you guys think. Have any more questions, clarifications, and whatnot. I hope this answered a lot of the questions that we've been seeing on Discord uh, over the last month or so before we begin the season. Um, light them up. I'm reading chat now. I don't see any questions. Um, if someone takes off with the wrong loadout, you can swap no. So you have so once you take off with the loadout, like I was saying before, guys, if you take off and you join the session and you join the server and you begin round one, you take off in an F-16, F-14, whatever it may be, and it's a bad loadout, come back and land, but you cannot change aircraft during that period. You're only allowed to change the aircraft after the round or the half finishes. So no switching no aircraft switching in between aircraft. rounds, or in, in, in the middle of an, of an existing active round. Uh, Kaidi, I want to go over two, two other little things. The first one, uh, and this is mainly out to the team leaders, is uh, teams are only allowed to spawn four aircraft at a time, not five, and have one ready and waiting. They are only allowed to spawn four aircraft at a time. Uh, no, you cannot spawn a fifth or a sixth and ready them up on the runway. We've taken that out. It's four only at a time. Uh, so please, please, please bear that in mind. There's negative survivor points for teams that do do that. And the second thing that is extremely stand, stand important. I'm going I'm to repeat that for everybody to make sure you all understood that correctly. Okay, so when your team loads in, you are no longer allowed to have a fifth backup person in your waiting for you to take off in the server. Four people are allowed to be in 
a slot at a time, nothing more. If you have a fifth person that loads in, the system will deduct survivor points from your total score that you have of the season, okay? So just make sure you do not load more than four people. Continue. The second one is when teams get ready to select their match, uh, it's detected automatically when there's a team lead from both sides and the person in the red slot will select the match to play. It will spit out a four digit password for the red team that the red team can only see and a four digit password for the blue team that only the blue team can see and those passwords will never be the same. It is imperative that team leads relay that password to the uh, to, to their own team only and record it because they may need it multiple times. You get kicked out of the server if you die or eject in when the round is started. So uh, we made this very clear in the video examples that we made available to all squadron leaders. Guys, make sure you write down your team's password, please. It is a four digit password and it is extremely important that you write down and remember this password for your team to access your coalition. There's no longer worrying about uh, what side do we join? What side are we red? Are we blue? Whatever. That password will unlock the coalition that you were supposed to be on in that moment always, and it will automatically switch when the round switches. It's amazing, but you have to make sure the one thing you have to do is write your password down and know it and don't forget it. It is very important. Uh, questions in chat, guys. Hang on one second here. So, uh, hey, for the flanker, guys, what do we got here? So, flanker, maybe it was posted, but I missed it. Uh, I probably missed somewhere where this was posted. Sorry for being with six. Yeah, eight missiles total, uh, six Fox 3s, and you're you're fine on ERs, ETs, and 77s. That's all good. Um, but just make sure eight, eight missiles in total. So, for you flanker, guys. Flanker guy. Don't take 10 or 12, however many however many of those flankers can hold. Eight missiles total. Uh, ET is a Fox 2 and ER is a Fox 1. Oh, um, got taken your second example, action, Plasma, is... Uh, your second example is uh, 10 missiles, so you'd have a problem with that. If you're in the rearming screen and you count 10 missiles, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Let's go ahead and watch uh, White Lion with his speed brakes out and Hawk. On One of the easiest ways, Plasma, to know the difference between the ER and the ET, I T for thermal and R for radar. So radar Fox 1, thermal uh, Fox 2. And hey guys, look at this. So White Lion, who had the weapon restriction failure in the beginning, comes back with a 3v4 deficit from the beginning to be to begin the round even. Oh, and I didn't even pause it, and I, I'm I'm an idiot. Um, but he came back to win the scrim. So anyways, eight missiles, guys, total. Six Fox 3s, no 9Xs. The weapon restrictions are written down clearly on the forum post as well. So make sure you're all um, up to date on that. And yeah, only eight missiles will make our missiles go faster. <laughs> I guess if they're more pointy, maybe. Any more questions? I'm just checking up on chat here. Um, what else do we have? What else do we have? Uh, so the Shadow League is a, uh, a, a platform for teams that are new and uh, or teams that cannot commit to, to the three matches that we have per stage. It's always available. Teams can join at any time throughout the four stages of that. If you guys are not in a team, or if you've got a team that's new and you're interested in uh, getting into competitive flying, uh, I think the Shadow League is definitely a good place to start. Having said such, there are there are average to very good teams also that 
choose to be in the Shadow League. So, uh, oh, one thing to note, guys. Um, yes, yeah, so Beef Beef does bring up a a point uh, about the SAR weapon restrictions, but we'll go over weapon restrictions for stage two for the SAR stage um, when when it comes time. But the SAR stage, if you guys remember House of SAR, um, the House of SAR basically it's the exact same weapon restrictions as House of SAR. So beef is is correct uh, in that aspect. So how the SAR stage is literally the SAR stage, um, exactly what beef just mentioned there. So no no t no ETs, no ERs. You only get the Rs and the Ts. Uh, no Fox threes, no nine Xs. Again, the weapon restrictions guys are all listed on the forums um, and our Discord as well. I will make sure to reiterate that every time the stage starts. Um, Can you clarify what your what your stance is a mod DCS BIOS win wing software banned because they use Lua exports. How about reshade? How do you plan to monitor all this? Uh, very simple. Um, we with pure scripts on and everything that we have turned on right now tracks everything. Um, obviously monitor exports are a default thing in the DCS game. Those are allowed. However, provided they are not, uh, projected onto your main GUI, uh, which is also enforceable by what we have going on for our tracking, um, mod basically being anything that's not DCS guys. Um, we had this conversation in discord. Um, if it's an add on, if it's a mod, if it's not DCS vanilla, um, it's not allowed. Uh, no cockpit skins, none of that stuff. No, no cockpit textures, only an external skin is allowed for your flight and basically nothing else. Squid, thank you very much for that donation. That oh, is Oh, sweet. The fantastic. first donation of the season. Squid, look at that. With the super chat. Thank you. Yeah, $10,000 from Squid. That is un <laughs> unbelievable, guys. Well done. That That's great. And guys, just to, you know, we really appreciate all of you guys. Um, this is a huge, this season is, is fucking huge. Um, we're excited. This, you know, this is a learning experience for us as much as it is for you guys. Uh, trying to keep the battlefield as dynamic as possible. Um, the amount of time that's gone into this. And another one, bribery from uh, from Red Star from Plasma, the $10 from Plasma. Um, it's just is that everything. Canadian dollars? Is that worth something? I don't know. I don't know. Just kidding. No, Plasma, <laughs> thank you. That's great. Um, anything you guys, we always appreciate these. Uh, any, anything you guys uh it all goes right back into the servers, pay for servers, pay for everything, uh, make the streams better, see what I can do. Um, obviously, I am no multi-million dollar uh, esports commentator, but I will do my best and try to give you guys a good stream as much as I can, as often as I can. Uh, but we greatly appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much for that gesture. I, I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Um, thank you. Anything else, Bear, for today that you wanted to go over while, we're, while we have the folks online? Um, Otherwise, I feel we can go ahead and wrap things up, but uh, I'll leave it over the floor open to you first. Yeah, guys, look, it's been it's been so much fun making and coming up with with things which I believe are in the best interest of fairness and uh, and, and trying to develop the the competitive scene into into something that's approachable for beginners as well as obviously keep the veterans happy and uh, and and on their toes there's there's so many new teams there's there's experience from the from the past it's going to be a super 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 exciting season oh um, and and one thing to note guys so this is a league right and i just said this in our discord but make sure you guys are aware you're not gonna get eliminated if you lose your first match you guys are with us the entire four stages Right? Nobody's going to get eliminated until the championships, once the st four stages end. Once the end of stage four happens, that's when the top 16 teams will be selected to move forward into the quote-unquote stage five, which is the championship eliminations, and that's where you guys are all fighting to be the top 4v4 team in DCS. So, you're with us. I hope you enjoy the experience. A lot of newer teams this year... Um, this is a whole different side of DCS, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, don't get discouraged. Uh, if you guys lose your first couple of matches or your first halves or lose a couple guys, don't get discouraged. Um, 
you know, we have a lot of people that I'm sure in our Discord that are willing to help you guys out. Uh, make sure you train regularly. Take what you guys learn. Um, another feature for this season is the automatic transmission of tech views via Google Drive link to your team leads. That's insane. So you guys, after your matches, will automatically get a tech view link to download your tech views for the, se for the stage, season, whatever you want to call it, sent to your team leads. That's incredible. And, and you guys can review these tech views. No manual inter inter intervention required. Grab the tech views, download them, review them. And, and just learn. But we're really happy to have all of you guys here this season. I mean, the turnout was unreal. I, I was blown away, and I'm, I'm super excited to see where, where it goes. Yeah, final thoughts are the, um, the there's several teams doing their first matches this weekend, so, so hopefully late next week we're going to start streaming a couple of the matches that go, that, that come and go. The 72 matches set for stage, uh, stage one, which ends on the 19th of February. So that's a lot of matches. Obviously, we can't stream them all, but we do as best we can for it. Um, enjoy it. Have fun. See you in the skies, and don't cheat. One more thing don't to note. Solid. Yes, yes. Um, uh, just to piggyback onto what Bear said, guys, with how big this is, I... I, I have I have a job as uh, contrary to popular belief, <laughs> and we have to do things outside of this. I don't believe we are going to be able to stream every match this uh, this season just because of how many there are. We will try our best. Um, we might work something out in the future, um, but is that an F14 with his gear down climbing out? It was okay. Never mind. Um, we'll do our best to stream all these guys. But um, yeah, I know, how, how dare I have to pay to live, you know, and do this stuff. But, you know, anyways, um, Moltar, it's, it's great to hear from you. I'm sure everybody's missed you. Um, Bear, thank you so much uh, for everything this season, uh, as well as Alpha Whiskey for that incredible trailer in the beginning, guys. I mean, how about that trailer? Um, thank you to him also for a lot of stuff for OBS that I've got here for my awesome transitions. Um, in-stream overlay coming from beef uh, changes. Yes, so changes are going to be a little bit different. You're not seeing them yet because they're not quite finalized. Um, it will include uh, score, team logos, um, a live view of weapons used, fuel used, uh, gun ammo remaining. Um, it's going to look a little bit different, the same but different, but a lot more cool stuff is going to be implemented um, with each with each with the new overlay. That was actually the cause of um, us not being able to show you the graphics and cool things in uh, this stream is because these tracks took place in the past. Um, the the overlay is designed to work on, on the current stuff. Now, so, if you guys go back to last season and look at last season's uh, the overlay, we have the videos on YouTube. If you're new here, go back to the videos on YouTube and you can see... Uh, what the overlay used to look like, and it will remain somewhat similar, but we're going to have a lot more cool stuff um, on on the screen with the logos and everything, and it's going to be really cool. I'm super excited. Uh, showed the trailer to my wife, and she had me sleep on the couch. Well, if that's... Hey, man. Hey, that's the sacrifice you have to make. <laughs> I think a and, divorce may be needed. I mean, I, I mean I, I'm... That's not out of the realm of possibilities, I would imagine, at that point. If that Jets video wife. if that video does not give you a hard on, I don't know what will, man. I I mean Moldy, I I mean, sometimes I choose to sleep on the couch. Well, it's a good thing you slept on the couch so you could watch it again by yourself with the volume cranked downstairs. Spent that night studying for tactics. A BVR tactics, so it worked out. See? See? You don't you don't need her. It's okay. It's all right. Uh, Multi plan to pitch in for a stream or two as much as he can. Um, if if you know I'll, if you guys are already sick of me, beef. I mean, if that's what you're saying, I mean, hell, I didn't think I was that bad. Damn, I'm in here for what half an hour, and you guys are already trying to get rid of me. Shit. <laughs> I see how it is. Um, yeah, we're all gonna try, guys. There's a lot going on. Um, but as you guys can probably probably imagine, and as you all have seen. This season is trying to be as automated as possible. So it's we're trying to be as hands off this season because of how big it is. The, le the, the, the less amount of manual intervention, the better. So we have more time for streaming and less uh, housekeeping. 
Antonio has one last question. Hot fix release today? Do we do the update? I believe you do. Okay, do. Absolutely. Um, hot fix as always. What was the hot fix today? I uh, fixed mostly VR, but also I think the F fifteen radar TWS President Jet. Oh, so when it comes to that, guys, what we've done, um, we've designed the stages, stage one, two, three, and four, to be roughly four weeks apart. And the idea here is that when the when a e, uh, ED patch comes out is when the next stage begins. Um, we're going to give you guys about four weekends or so between each. Um, each stage so point being is that we're hoping nothing should change in the middle of a stage and you guys should not um update dcs in the middle of a stage unless it's a hot fix specifically noted but do not update dcs in the middle of a stage unless directed by the staff team otherwise you're gonna have problems so we'll go ahead and close out here guys um thank you for your time thanks for tuning in um Feel free to watch this again afterwards in case you have any clarification, but we'll see you guys soon in the next stream. Good luck to the teams this weekend facing off in some of the first matches of the Satel 23 Survivor Series. Um, Moltar, Bear, thank you. Alpha Whiskey, thank you. Kikaku, thank you. Everybody, uh, Kagi, thank you. Everybody who helped out this season for all the teams and the guys that helped us test during the season. Too many of you guys to list. You know who you are, and we greatly appreciate you helping out, and we'll see you all soon. Trademark in the next stream. Yeah, thank you, Coyote, for stream. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Take it easy, everyone.